The struggle of the proletariat continues on. So we sort of have two armies now. I wouldn't say that we really do. But once we get some men at arms in here, although we will be going, you know, decently above the peasant economy cap, and therefore losing some income, this army will get a lot stronger. In terms of alliances and all of that, ooh, this is new. Wow, I get 3,000 gold and a trade agreement for 300 gold a turn for declaring war on these guys who are all the way up here. I'm gonna do that. I do want some more territory down here, though. I think I might go for the Great Desert of Araby. Uh, we're 11 turns away from the water pumps, which will dramatically increase the number of peasants we can get. Why would you declare war on me, though? You have two significant wars already, and one of your enemy factions is between me and you. Uh, yeah, we can get there next turn. And I'm pretty sure we can just take that. Even if they have their army there, it's not a good army. They do have their army there. Oh, that's just Noblar Trappers. We shit on Noblar Trappers. <laughs> That is a dog shit garrison too, and they're not upgrading it for four more turns. Awesome. As soon as Raponce takes this and recovers, I want to declare war on these guys. Take over all their territory. If they're offering it for free... I guess, I guess. I can always break it. If I do declare war on them, it won't be very soon, so... Ooh, that's a good auto-resolve. Yeah, I think I'll auto-resolve that. Not bad, not bad losses. Probably realistic. And immune to desert attrition, all armies. That is what I was looking for. And sandstorm attrition. Although today's sponsor, Clash of Clans, might not make you immune to desert attrition, it can make you immune to boredom. Clash of Clans is one of the most popular free-to-play mobile games in the world, and it has been for a very long time. You've probably played it or at least heard of it before, but over the last few years there have been a ton of additional features, game modes, and all sorts of other content added to the game. You now have an entirely second base called the Builder Base, where you can fight versus battles against other players, seeing who can do more damage and get more stars attacking the enemy base at the same time. It's a really cool new game mode, and also clan games are a great way to play with your clan, and siege machines offer tons of new ways to use your clan castle troops in attacks. Overall, whether you're a new player or a seasoned veteran who has taken a break from the game, now is a great time to start playing Clash of Clans. Big thanks to Clash of Clans for sponsoring today's video, and back to the video. Oh, that is extremely convenient. They lost their other army. Fine. Good. Great. Really? Are you sure? Are you are you certain, Auto Resolve? Fine. I guess we'll manually fight this. I don't think we'll take more than like 50 losses, if that. Oh my god, it's just raining on them. And that's only four trebuchets. Oh, that's a beautiful cast. Can we actually get value with that spell? Eh, a little bit. I mean, it's relatively cheap, but that's still not very good. Oof, I thought they were off fire at will. I thought you were off fire at will. You were not off fire at will. Once again, a significant part of our casualties due to friendly fire with the trebuchets. Hopefully not going to make a habit of that, although I already quite literally have made a habit of that. Pretty good, pretty good. They just have like one more settlement. I kind of need that gold to develop my other settlements. I'm gonna declare war, but you're also fighting on at least three fronts after declaring war on me, so... And can you... yeah, you could attack that next turn. Okay, no losses! And that would just be a very normal, boring siege battle, so... alright. Oh, we could go for Grail Reliques and Battle Pilgrims here pretty soon. Icon of Devotion, 12 leadership and immune to psychology in a 55 meter range. Yeah, and we still have the plus 15% upkeep, so once we get rid of that, we will have a lot more gold. That is dog shit. This is mediocre. It's just so many, it's just so many. With both of these armies though, if we heal up fully, we could just pretty easily take this. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I think we gotta go for that. I will go for this. Hopefully they stand and fight. Okay, they will. Yeah, I'm gonna fight this with small armies. We can just easily pick them apart that way. We have a better chance of actually uh, getting good trades there. I'm not going to get overwhelmed. I don't trust my micro here with large armies. Oh, I like this. I like this spot. This is very similar to an area that I used before to my advantage. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. That's going to be a good clump. Although you specifically won... Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Okay. You shobbed to your gone, although one of our trebuchets is gone with them. Decent bit of ammo on most of these archers. Not all of them, but most of them. 
This is the very slow way of doing this battle, but I think it's the more efficient way. We'll get rid of these guys as well, and these guys. I really want to be careful about not losing units. And we keep firing there. Oh my god, so many high tier units are just getting decimated right there. That is so good. We're going to do the same thing again, where we just open up a pathway to shoot. They're moving up quicker than the dwarves, because they're not dwarves, but still, we can make that work. Here, there's enough elevation that we should be able to hit that accurately with one of them. I don't want to overkill any group of them. Uh, they do have that really strong army coming in now, so that will be a little bit of a problem when it does get to us. God, it's all Tomb Guard now, that's a problem. It's all Tomb Guard, and they do outclass us. Over here, we can kill these guys pretty quickly. I think we win this, I think we win this. I'm saying it so that I convince myself of its truth. Shit, 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 shit. This is so close. This is so close. Even if we lose this, we've taken so many less casualties than they have that we should be all right, I think. Uh, Rapunzel is unbreakable. I forgot about that. That changes things quite a bit because she's still at half health. After all of this shit, she's still at half health. This is, this is cheesy, but I don't even have anything that makes her stronger than she should be. She's just this strong. The peasants allowed her to do this. They enabled her, at least. And there we go. We did get so much value with the field trebuchets. Oh, except for these ones for some reason. Oh, we did lose a lot of melee units. All right, one unit of halberdiers is all we lost. That's all we lost. Now we can just take this. Is that worthwhile? Is that worthwhile? That is worthwhile. That is worthwhile. Now we just yoink this. I think it would have been tier 3 if we didn't sack it, but I also think that that's still worth it. This has already started to steamroll a little bit, but it's mostly because we don't have any strong opponents. It's not a matter of, like, we're insanely strong yet. I still can't see... Oh! The Drakenhof Conclave is gone! I don't even need to deal with them, then. I just need uh, 15 more settlements. Alright, uh, that makes things a little more simple for me. Ooh, you're too strong. You're... you're too strong, no thank you. I'm gonna rely on these guys getting wiped out. They usually do. They usually get killed by something or another. They're too aggressive. I'm just gonna hope that I don't need to deal with them. Uh, how much do you want to pay me for declaring war on Kemri? Because I'm gonna do it regardless. Okay, 1,200 free gold. Nice. Because I was just gonna yoink this either way, because this is a really good settlement. Mm, because it's a siege battle, I'm, I'm not actually gonna manually fight it. Fuck that. Oh, shit. Fuck it. I'm taking that. I'm taking that to develop all my other provinces and all that. I think that's worthwhile. Because there's some really good buildings that are just too expensive for me to normally get, but now I can grab them. Yeah, you keep healing up slowly, you heal up quickly. And then we'll have a wrecking ball and something to defend with. I'm not sure what faction could have given them that around here. There's one down here as well. I don't actually know how they got those. Uh, we'll see. We can reach that in one turn. We can't reach that in one turn, so we go for this next turn. Uh, but yeah, I do want to get rid of the Tomb Kings here. Once they're done, I'll have a lot more interesting enemies to fight. All of these skeletons are getting a little boring, to be completely honest. Just a bunch of shitty skeletons. One unit of the Archer Chariots. They're decent, but they're not scarily good. 110 melee defense, she's not getting hit, and she is murking their lord. Oh yeah, that is nice. That is really good. All about the angles. We're mostly out of ammo, but they're mostly out of being alive, so <laughs> I'll take that. And yeah, just overall, very good. Snipe their lord, good value on Rapunz. Yeah, I like that. Eight chivalry per turn is massive, leadership aura is massive, and leadership for the whole army is massive. Okay, he sacked that settlement, presumably. Ooh, I might be able to reach him. Or Volkmar might. Well, shit, I'll just let him fight and yoink those settlements. Or I could wipe out Cetra. I could definitely wipe out Cetra there. That might be the better move. Because he just retreated from one battle. For what reason are you in my territory with your stinky-ass plague? And just dying. He's just dying on my lawn. Uh, probably gonna manually fight this to minimize the losses. They have so much damage on their more important units, and just the majority of their units, that I am not overly concerned. Yeah, that was fast army losses right there. They are gone already. Wow. Yeah, uh, that was good, though. That was good. We were, oh, fuck. Three turns? I thought it was one turn remaining. Either I misread that, or there's even more plague than there was before there. But regardless, we'll take this, because we already have plague in our territory anyways. Oh, god, all of these are worthless, except for recruitment costs, which is only moderately worthless. Still not good. <laughs> okay, should be able to get two decent settlements next turn. 
Please don't yoink Kasabara out from under me. I don't think you can. Yeah, he doesn't have the movement range for it. Okay, 149 losses. That is not bad. 8,000 gold, which I don't really need. I have enough income that I can actually build up all of my regions now. This garrison is mediocre. We're probably going to have to manually fight this, but I think it'll be an easy manual fight. But yeah, it's just a nice way of saving time in situations like that um, to cap the control points. I would have won that with virtually no casualties just using all my ammo, but waiting for them all to walk into my range and stuff like that. It just, it would have taken a long ass time. Awesome. Okay. Shit. Cool. Uh, she was already unbreakable. Now she's even more unbreakable. My god, this is going so much better than I thought it would. Yeah, the other good thing that's really happened and allowed us to expand this quickly and just do this well is that we haven't had to fight any wars on two fronts. I think I might have another army build up and go up here to try and deal with these guys. You no longer have a plague, now you just want to leave. If I can't get to that small settlement next turn regardless, I'm just going to kill him. I, I gain nothing from doing it, but he's just being a dick and he's annoyed me, so I may as well. Yes, we can have three armies worth of peasants now. So I'm just going to kill you because I can, and also because I get a little bit of XP, tiny little bit for free. I get warrior. Awesome. Great. These guys are at war with the Last Defenders, and I don't think I want the Last Defenders territory. I'll do that, and I'll start building up my relations with them, because I really want to be friends with these guys and all these other factions down here, because I want to trade with them, I don't want to go to war with them, and I think this is a pretty, like, isolated area that I could take, and I'm not going to be at too much of a threat from here. Balance of power looks good as well. I've already dealt with the dwarves, I know I can do a decent job of it. This should be an easy one. This is a good spell. That's going to hurt me badly. Because of that, I'm just going to auto-resolve this. Those are really three units that I can just get back and replace instantly. Yeah, I mean, this will be another quick one where I just yoink the settlement out from under them. I just realized that I'm still keeping these guys by the um, field trebuchets just as force of habit after dealing with the Tomb Kings for so long. <laughs> yep, there we go. Army losses. Oh my god. That took a while. Yoink. And more gold. My god, we have a lot of gold. It's not worth that much for Bretonia, but it's still gold. I'll take it. I'm not actually going to have a full stack of them, but temporarily, while I still have, you know, free peasants, I will be getting them. Once it's built up, I'll have a lot of peasant bowmen and a lot of field trebuchets. I'll probably have three field trebuchets. Yeah, I'll also be able to grab a Grail Relique here, so that'll be very helpful. Plus 12 leadership and immune to psychology for all those peasant mobs. They might actually be able to hold for, like, maybe even 15 seconds. This army mixed with this garrison is not enough to even slow us down, really. We might be able to auto-resolve that, but more likely we'll have to manually fight it. Ooh, Iron Drakes. Actually, these guys have all sorts of runes and stuff, too. But yeah, they're actually... This is a good uh, little army here. I'm very glad they don't have a more full one. Ooh, and it will be a settlement battle. I think that'll actually be positive for us, though, since it's a small settlement. This will be a very interesting battle, though. This is actually an interesting army comp for once. Uh, ooh, there are Iron Drakes there, so I'm going to be careful about that. Uh, okay, those Dwarf Warriors are gone. Go after those Quarrelers, please. Yeah, there's some more up there. And yeah, I don't want to let the Quarrelers take out my Trebuchets. That would be a real shame. They do have shields and 85 armor, so they won't die quickly, but they will still die. We have enough arrows that pretty much anything we shoot at will die. Yeah, those shields are helping a lot, but their health's still going down. Oh, that's just a wave. That's just a wave of arrows. And now they're going down. Oh, yeah, it's only a matter of time. I mean, look at all the arrows around them. We're missing like 80% of our shots here, but they're still dying. Yeah, I guess just keep trying to fire there. You're not going to hit many shots, but the ones that you do will get a lot of value. But over here, all four of these archer units shooting them. Yeah, that's doing a good bit of damage. We'll move a couple more up. They're going back and forth, and that's how they die. A lot of the time, the AI just goes back and forth. It's indecisive, and that's when it really just is easy to kill. Very easy to deal with. They have gotten, like, a little bit of value. Killed a few of us, but not even 100 gold value. Okay, and these guys are actually flanking behind. These guys are really interesting. They have magical flaming attacks and just good stats overall. Very good weapon strength, but they don't have shields. They do effectively have 35% physical resistance right now, including the Blessing of the Lady. Oh yeah, that's very minimal AP. Very low. Oh god, oh, that it just exploded. Alright. Oh, we accidentally captured that control point. That's why it exploded. Alright. Yeah, one Slayer left. And he's dead. Uh, oh, we did lose that one unit. They were only ranked 3, though. That's not the worst. 
She's zooming down towards us. We should be able to just in time get to her. I think this garrison will be sufficient. Just in case. I don't think she can attack this right away. But I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I will either way be going for field trebuchets and peasant bowmen. 22 bonus versus large. That's pretty good. I'll grab these guys just because I think I might need them. I will go for that. Just because that'll be a long battle. But we're up to 75 as the cap for the number of peasants we can have. That is insane. Yeah, we're just going to grab a bunch of peasants. Just more peasants just filling up that uh, peasant economy. We want to hit the limit here but not go over it. I think that's really what I should be doing. We should be alright there. I don't know why she's being so aggressive or what her real goal is there. I don't see any point for her doing that. Yeah, six peasant bowmen, three field trebuchets, one grail relic, a bunch of peasant mobs, and one good melee unit. That seems like it might work. I'm not sure. I'm still experimenting here. There's a lot of different options that we have. Here we're just getting a bunch more peasant mobs. This will be a decent army eventually as well. We're chilling then. Look at that balance of power. This army's not that good. Probably largely because it has a plague. Leadership minus nine from the plague. That is huge. Thoric Ironbrow can't attack us right away, and he's also very hurt, so that's great. Really? I might be able to auto-resolve them. Oh, what the fuck? It said it was like 90% in my favor. Luckily, they do still have that minus nine leadership. She's going to be a real pain in the ass to deal with. I don't have any good way to deal with her directly. We're just entirely reliant on being able to shoot all of them before they kill our melee infantry here, and I think we can do that. So the Grail Relic is a skeleton on a fake horse being held up by three or four just dying peasants. And this increases their leadership massively. <laughs> uh, I don't want the dogs to flank me, which is why I'm going kind of wide here. Uh, dogs coming up here. Scurvy dogs are going to trade poorly there. Well, I could go for the dwellers below on these guys. Okay, we're going to manually target right there. Pretty good work from that spell. Nothing incredible. 92 kills. Thousand value, actually. That's That's really good. Okay, good damage there. Some friendly fire. They're lasting very long for having minus nine leadership across the board. They don't actually have it? What? How have we lost this? We did so much damage to them so quickly and they just haven't routed at all. That is really bad. If they had that minus nine leadership, we won that easily. We easily win that if we fight that again. That is so broken. We lost only three units. They lost a lot more than three units because they fought to the death because they didn't have that minus nine leadership. Like, it says right here, all units suffer attrition from the plague, leadership minus nine. Well, I mean, it's not like they're recovering, so I guess I can just go back here. And can you... Yes? Yes. The dwarves are almost done here. Nice auto-resolve. That is good. Oh, that's a problem right there. Scarbrand the Exiled. Okay, that is bad. But we can get Rapunzel there in like two turns, so... Yeah, no shot he can uh, attack us while we're force marching, but we'll go back down there. And we auto-resolve this now. We will be tired in the battle, but we're just going to use the garrison regardless. Literally just the garrison and magic. And they're just still holding forever because they don't actually have any downsides from having to plague in battles. And that is their legendary lord gone with their army. And the next turn, we should be able to take Sartosa, unless they build up a really good army immediately, because these guys are not going to hold it down. Okay, at least it didn't go for Kemri. That would have been harder to build back up. Yeah, he raised it. Oh, God, he's running so far. Oh, the movement range. God, I can't do anything about him, because he's just running away from me like a coward. You can probably yoink this. There they are. Oh, my God. Oh, that's a little terrifying from this angle. But it worked pretty well. Wait, they're just dudes, though. How are they running at 40 speed? Oh, those are just some fast peasants right there. God damn. <laughs> those guys are zooming while carrying that, too. They're running faster than normal peasants can. That is crazy. Oh, wait, we actually got the army losses on them before we could even get to the control point. All right, that works, too. <laughs> yeah, all of our deaths were from their towers. They have zero kills on all of these units. It was just their towers. <laughs> Now, the question is, what else do these guys have? And the answer is, not very much with that balance of power there, and we have a second army coming over. I can probably force march up a little bit to just get a little closer. I should be safe to do that, because he's in force march there. I really doubt he can reach me. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to reach me, but he can reach Kemri. Okay, luckily he's not attacking immediately. Hopefully I can attack him into rear or something. 
Uh, yeah, they just take that. There's not anything I can do there. That garrison is doo-doo. I don't think he'll have the opportunity to take back the rest of his territory, though, before I get back to him. He really... he's very hurt. Wait, what? Why are you... why? That was the worst move the dwarves could have made. Oh, shit. Oh, these are both incredibly good bonuses. Sending aid, 15% campaign movement range. That is so incredibly lucky right there. Oh my god, we needed that to deal with Scarbrand. Uh, we can't quite... We might be able to reinforce. We can't quite attack him, but we might be able to reinforce now that we have that extra range. Is that... Uh, no, she won't reinforce there. I guess I will force march her then. There we go. That changes things quite a bit. That's a close victory auto-resolve. Not a bad one. We have a lot of archers. They have very little armor and missile resistance. They summoned a unit on me. Um, well, that's fine. That wasn't too bad. They killed like 50 of my uh, men-at-arms. We're going to be doing a little bit of corner camping here. Uh, our archers should deal with these blood letters pretty effectively. Scarbrand himself is going to be a threat, but he's taking a good amount of damage from the archers as well. I think we're better off shooting his uh, blood letters, though. Get him, Rapunz. Get him. Hit him with that big old sword. Or just circle around him. That works too. Yeah, no, I think she might be able to beat his ass. He's also getting shot so much by those arrows. He has such a big hitbox. Yeah, all of these guys are going to fuck up those chariots. Over here, we are crumbling a little bit, but not too much. We're really going to be all right here, I think. Good, that's the army losses right there. That's the army losses, and Scarbrand's gone. He did a lot of damage to Rapunza, actually. I don't think she would have beaten him. <laughs> That was a good victory. That was not very hard. Uh, most of the garrison's gone and very little damage on our army. That is exactly what I wanted to see there. But less than 200 losses on our main army. That is awesome. Ooh, you could just yoink another settlement right there and they don't have that much power, but I don't know where their armies are. We have very shitty armies here, but still, nine units are not going to be able to wipe us out. Sit right together there, and we're just going to slowly get rid of the vampiric corruption here, and eventually these regions will be very profitable for us, especially this one. How do I get three settlements here? That's the big question. I want to deal with that with her. She will be very hurt when getting to it, but that's relatively okay. We can deal with that. These guys are not a threat at all. You two are chilling, but I think I want to go for another settlement next turn. I think you guys can take this out. I want to move them probably together still. I don't want to take too much damage unnecessarily. Do we have any diplomacy options? Oh, you want to join that for free. And you have no wars currently, so alright, that's great. You want to join that one. Join that then, for free. I like that. You are not really a threat. I don't know what he's doing there. We're probably going to wipe him out with this army next turn. Mm, that's one too many units lost. We fought much harder ones than this against Korn, so I think I'll just skip by this one. Um, ugh, more losses than I was hoping for. By about three times. But... We survived it, and they did not. I theoretically could get the short campaign victory within one or two turns here, but I don't think I could do that in a way that's actually going to be sustainable for the campaign overall. Yeah, I think I would need to spread myself too thin in order to get this short campaign victory quickly. I can go for that. I think that makes sense. I think that actually makes sense. Because they align with me in terms of being at war with the Disciples of the Maw. I think they'll break the peace... But for now, they want peace. And I really just want to back off of here, focus on all of this. This is more important. Because I'm fighting a war on three fronts right now. One front is here. One front is here. And this is so far away from the other two fronts. I've kind of got to shut it down, I think. Oh, they could... I could get peace with them. This actually does change things, if I can get this peace treaty. I think this is a worthwhile trade. I think I'll go for that. And then... Essentially, I've gotten rid of two of my four biggest threats. And that lets me focus all of my efforts, all of my armies, onto this main area. And then you can start to move over here. I'm hoping, I'm not sure, but I'm hoping that from right here I can get there in one turn. You can go for that, probably auto-resolve it, easy peasy. There we go, that's nice. Love to see that. I don't want to... You know, overdo it. I don't want to put my armies in positions where they don't have the resources to... Oh, fuck, that's bad. Yeah, that's the type of thing that I want to be prepared for. And I can't be prepared for that if I have all my armies spread out all over the place. I think what I do is I literally just group all three of these armies up and I try to take out Wurzag with all of them. That's a Pyrrhic victory? Okay, whatever. Okay, that's good enough. 
That's good enough. Not bad, 629, almost all peasant mobs. That's not good. Oh, and they have another army up there as well. Okay. We start building up. Just an army to recruit here, essentially. To recruit extra units. Not attacking that yet? Okay, he's in encamp stance. I think I attack him. I think I attack him and I think I win there. Wait a minute. Oh, he can! Oh shit, he can reinforce there. Okay, that's awesome. Straight up attack him. I think that this is going to be an auto-resolve. With that additional army there, yeah. I think I can reduce my casualties by a large enough number that it's worth manually fighting this. I'll leave these guys on AI control. Um, these guys are going down very quickly. We use this, and we do want to get on Wurzag soon. He's pretty much on his own there. Hopefully they'll send some of their faster units back to those guys. That would be great. I don't think they will, though. You are dealing with Wurzag pretty well. He's down to half health already. That's great. That's awesome. Um, and I'm going to need some more units on the front lines, unfortunately. You are going to need to get up there. Uh, okay, Wurzag's dead. That's great. You go after them. Our other lord is just automatically going for that. That's great. That's awesome. Love the AI control in situations like this. We are unfortunately breaking a little bit here, but not too quickly. We are going to survive this overall, and they're going to be pretty concentrated on this first army's melee infantry. And we do have replacement melee infantry here that are not actually going to get very hurt. Uh, we did lose most of our melee infantry, but we didn't lose shit else. So, not too bad. Yeah, I mean, literally these guys barely got hurt, so just replacements. Straight up. Easy peasy. We can send them back down there to get more, and then we can just keep doing that, because we're concentrating our losses almost exclusively on the melee infantry. That makes it really easy to just re-recruit them. <laughs> At this point, I feel like you can safely leave Sartosa. I don't think we're going to immediately lose it. Warzag doesn't have that many settlements. He has four. If I can wipe them out before he gets recruited back again, that'll be awesome. You're running back to that settlement, I think? Yeah, if I can take him out and that settlement, that'll be very good. You can indeed reach that. These guys are in Force March. They will not be as effective, given that. Ooh, don't auto-resolve that. Now that's a decisive victory auto-resolve with no actual units lost. This would not be a fun one to fight manually, so I'm just not going to fight it manually. We'll auto-resolve that. That's a lot of losses, but I think it's a realistic number. Short victory achieved. We have a pretty clear way to expand here, although it's not great because of the territory. We could always declare war on these guys again, or we could always declare war on these guys again. So once we deal with these two threats, we have a really good opportunity to just determine where do we want to go. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video and you like the series, I have a ton of series that I've already done if you haven't already seen them. Something like eight or nine of these different campaigns, these challenge campaigns. Uh, so there's probably one of them on the screen right now. You can click that if you want. Peace out. Thanks for watching.